Good morning, everyone. Today, something that's pretty much non-financial, but relates to finance in some sort of way, like I always tell you, everything leads back to money in some sense of a word. So I just want to warn all the listeners here this morning to put on your tin for you kufi, put on your tin for you hat, because we're going to dive somewhat deep, not too, not too deep, of how George Ordenwell has predicted the current state that we are in. And if you believe that the government or special interest groups are watching and learning your every movement, you are absolutely correct. They control your thoughts. They control your speech. They control your actions. And you probably say, no, I, I'm, I have you know, pretty much control of everything I do and everything I say and everything I think. You know, one of the books that I told my wife to essentially read was The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph L. Murphy. Now, nonetheless, he is a non-black author, but nonetheless, the book is very, very relevant and very important. And I know how some people may think that some people may think, you know, why is that relevant? Because I read a lot of books from different influences, uh, different philosophers, um, scientific books that kind of shapes my perspective on life in itself. And I think it's very important that you continue to educate yourself outside of grade school and as well as college. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's important that you understand how critical race theory social media and smart plays a role in your daily activities the way that you view the world your perspective on life what countries you travel to what foods you eat what clothes you wear what events and functions you go to they all play a very significant if not key role into you making the decisions that you make they all like to believe that with more information or better information you make better decisions but we have to be very very realistic in the, the world that we live in today where social media believe it or not controls us by the way of special interest groups as well as the government right because the government can do a lot of things put uh, sanctions and uh, roadblocks and barriers in place to stop certain social media platforms producing certain content but they don't do that, do they? Not at all. So we're going to get into the video here. We're going to get into some breakdown of the conclusions that I've made for a very long time. We've been knowing this ever since 1949 when George Ornwell came out with the book 1984, basically stating that Big Brother is watching you. Big Brother meaning the government. But in this case, because uh, Big Brother can also include special interest groups like large corporations. So we have to take that into toll as well, okay? So I just wanted to point those things out to you. Again, I think it's important that we just aware of our surroundings. So the first thing I'm going to tackle here is critical race theory, okay? I know you've been hearing about it. I know you've been reading about it. You probably even went to some school board meetings to fight against it or maybe fight for it. Nevertheless, you've heard about it in some form or fashion. So with that being said, let's talk about it. Critical race theory and why is it under attack? It says here that critical race theory, a way of understanding how American racism has shaped public policy or device discourse that pits people of color against white people, liberals and conservatives are in sharp disagreement. And liberal and conservatives are just Democrats and Republicans, right? Just a pretty way of saying those political parties. The events of the last decade have increased public awareness about things like housing segregation, the impacts of criminal justice policy in the 1990s, and the legacy of enslavement on black Americans. And just point out some key things, 1990, they mean the 1994, Crime Act. 
School boards, superintendents, and even principals and teachers are already facing questions about critical race theory, and there are significant disagreements even among experts about its precise definition, as well how its tenets should inform K-12 through policy and practice. Family, we understand what critical race theory is, correct? Critical race theory is anything that the powers that be, okay, put on your 10 for a koofy hat, the powers that be that will empower, inform, and educate people on the atrocities of the American government dealing with black people. They would like to pin this against people of color. No, 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 we're not people of color, we're black Americans. We're U.S. freedmen. We are foundational Black Americans. And for a very long time, they have been trying to limit, they have been trying to stop, they have been trying to forbid people being educated of this country's dark past. And that's hundreds of years of slavery. How can you not teach history? See, they like to replace it with critical race theory. They like to use these trick words to disinform you with misinformation about what it really is. Family, this is history. This is American history. That is what critical race theory is about. How can you teach American history if you don't teach about slavery and all the things they're after, like Jim Crow and discrimination and redlining, etc.? That's not critical race theory. But I'm going to read a little bit more because they break it down even further to give it some legitimacy. Let me go back here. Uh-oh, here we go. Give me one second, family. All right, I had some highlights here. I think they went away. Let me see if I can get back to my point. All right, here we go. It states here that critical race theory is an academic concept. It's an academic concept that is more than 40 years old and all of a sudden it's it's starting to make headwind i wonder why the core idea if you notice critical race theory has really been generated in the past two years ever since the pandemic and ever since foundational black americans though u.s freeman has been beating the drum on reparations the, because of like reparations when you get reparations for it? and then it leads to critical race theory does it not the core idea is that race is a social construct you see that that race is a social construct. No, it's not. And that racism is not merely the product of individual bias or prejudices. No. Race is a social construct of what? But also something embedded in legal systems and policies. We understand that this country was built on the backs of of enslaved Africans, our forefathers and ancestors, and that we are the descendants of those people. So we already know just looking at the Jim Crow system that that was a legal system throughout the states and the federal government, if not supported it, did nothing do to stop slavery in a whole. And a matter of fact, the federal government has legalized it. So it is embedded in the American laws. And still to this day, the word slavery is inside of the Constitution. Slavery is still prominent in the American Constitution and is legalized by the federal government in which the Constitution, which hails its power from. It also states here, the basic tenets of critical race theory, or CRT, and ladies and gentlemen, when I say critical race theory, just think about history. They are trying to forbid, for, forbid of teachers and, 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 and educators of teaching history slavery is a part of american history it says here merged out of a framework for legal analysis in the late 1970s and the early 1980s created by legal scholars like Derek bill kimberly crenshaw and richard Diego, among others and it goes into what is a good example but family i didn't want to stay here too long because i wanted to inform you that critical race theory is parts of history that state local and even the federal government do not want to teach the next generation but you know what they will do they'll teach your third graders they'll teach your fifth graders <laughs> about sexual orientation 
and they will impose the LGBT narrative and perspective on them. And I have nothing against the LGBT community as a whole, but why are third graders need to know about sexuality? Let's move on because there's a bigger conversation here. 1984, George Ornwell. We understand that this book sets place in Oceania, right? That Australia sort of area, a thousand, you know, all those particular islands around that area. And it talks about totalitarian. It says that Oceania is governed by all controlling party, which has brainwashed, listen, which has brainwashed the population into unthinking obedience to its leaders. Big Brother. This is what George Ornwell actually used. He used the term Big Brother. I'm using Big Brother. I'm using special interests. I'm using large corporations. And they say that the party has created a proper against a proper against it language known as Newspeak, which is designed to limit free thought and promote party doctrines. Listen to this. It is designed to limit free thought and promote the party's doctrine. And some of those things absolutely include doublethink. Never heard of doublethink? Well, doublethink is basically a belief in contradictory ideas simultaneously. Right? You ever heard the terminology that white supremacy takes both sides of the arm argument that's double thing and we have to understand that is reflected in a party slogan for example war is peace freedom is slavery and ignorance is strength see that's when the party maintains control through the thought police and continuous surveillance how you been surveilled Now, if I kind of do a quick summary of the book, we know within the book, you have a guy named Winston Smith. His name is Winston Smith. He's a minor party functionary, a person living in London that is still shot by a nuclear war that took place not long after World War II. And he belongs to the outer party. And his job is to rewrite history of the Ministry of Truth, bring it in line with the current political thinking. However, Winston's Longing for truth and descendancy leads him to secretly rebel against the government. Now, he embarks on a forbidden affair uh, with this lady named Julia, a like-minded woman, and they rent a room in a neighborhood populated by pros, okay? Winston also becomes increasingly interested in the, brother, uh, the Brotherhood, a group of dissenters. Unbeknown to Winston and Julia, however, they are being watched closely. Who are watching them? Big Brother, the government. So when Winston is approached by O'Brien, an official of the inner party who appears to be a secret member of the Brotherhood, the trap is set. O'Brien is actually a spy for the party on the outlook for thought criminals, on the outlook for thought criminals, meaning having free thought, free will, free action, self-awareness. That is thought criminals, ladies and gentlemen. And Winston and Julia are eventually caught and set to the Ministry of Love for a violent re-education <laughs> they send them to the ministry of love for a violent re-education see that's that double thing but the ensuing imprisonment of torture and re-education of winston are intended not merely to break him physically or make him submit but to root out his independence and destroy his dignity and humanity now, there's this room, room one on one, where prisoners, prisoners, excuse me, prisoners are forced into submission by exposure to their worst nightmares. Winston panics as a cage of rats is attached to his head. He yells out for his tormentors, you know, to do it to Julia and states that he does not care what happens to her. With this betrayal, Winston is released. He later encounters Julia and neither is interested in the other. Instead, Winston loves Big Brother family are you following me they use Winston's worst fears so he would speak out against Julia did the same thing to Julia and warred themselves against each other and now they don't want to do nothing with one another just by mental psychological torture what am I stating here 
Am I stating that the government does mental and psychological torture? Well, I just want to give you some examples of first, how do they go about learning your each and every move? How do they understanding your thoughts? How are they understanding your actions and your trends and, uh, uh, you know, your environment in which you operate in? This is how. First, they start off with smart technology, right? And we're going to get into some other things here. But the first thing is they talk about smart technology and what is smart technology. Now, there's a company here that promotes smart, smart technology, but I'm going to use them for example for the definition they state here. Smart technology means self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology. This technology is used to provide cognitive awareness to objects by making use of advanced technologies like Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and big data. Smart technology. So if you have a smart device, right? You have an Amazon Alexa. You have a Google smart device. You have all of these smart devices within your home, within your car. They embed them, either the software or the device themselves, inside of your home, your office, as well as your car. And it's self-monitoring analysis, reporting technology. That technology is used to provide cognitive awareness to objects by making use of advanced technologies like Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and big data. It goes on to say, adapt and convey information about objects and environment, making the monitoring pro process seamless and self-governed. What does that mean? They make the devices autonomous. They need, they need no other input but Wi-Fi to be connected to a database system that's located in a cloud, meaning a machine is collecting the information and talking back to the machine in order to make commands. But all the while, we cannot forget the word smart, monitoring and reporting technology. These are some of the key things that we have to look at, family, of the devices, because a lot of us actually want our privacy in life. And for a very long time, I've traveled to over 40 something countries. And it's the one thing that I notice that most people may not noticeably notice when they go to these countries of how they are essentially watching you from the time you get off the plane. How they're watching you. Well, that's quite easy. People often label China as a security state when in fact the U.S. has more closed circuit cameras per capita regarding the number of cameras per person. The United States remains a clear leader in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, now you know. See, I thought Korea was. I thought Japan was. When I went to Korea, when I went to Japan, everywhere I went on every corner in the subway, they had a camera and it records everything. Now, a lot of us like to believe, oh, America, we just have those speed cameras. <laughs> they record more than your speed. They record a lot more than your speed, ladies and gentlemen. They record every single thing that goes within the peripheral, that goes in, in, inside of the lens frame. It records absolutely everything. And a lot of these cameras, especially the new ones that they're putting up, can also record sound because a lot of these videos at first had no sound. Now they're putting sound sensors in them and they can do live recording, meaning that someone is on the other end of the computer just watching the cameras looking for crime and other sorts of things that are occurring in the environment things that are occurring in the community now a lot of these cameras are in public places in the u.s but i was reading some legislation about putting cctv inside of private neighborhoods and we know where they're going to start right you know they're going to start in the hood you know they're going to start in the projects. You know they're going to start in low impoverished areas. And what does that all total up to be? 
they're going to start in black neighborhoods. They're going to start in black communities of putting these CCTVs up. See, even though I told you in the beginning of this video to put on your tinfoil kufi hat, that does not mean that what I'm saying is far-fetched. No, this is already occurring with smart technology. This is already occurring with critical race theory. This is already occurring with close circuit TV. Those are those cameras that you see each and everywhere and not just where you drive. Because if I'm a shop owner, not only do I have a camera inside of my shop, but some shop owners have cameras outside of their shop. And a lot of these cameras can be intertwined into local, state, and federal networks in order to have live recording, and they will pay for the cameras themselves. Let me move on. The number of surveillance cameras is expanding around the world for governments to have control over their population. You're stating, well, okay, okay, he's talking about all this. How can they have control over me? Well, just like your Google, just like your Amazon, just like any smart device you have in your home. And I'm also including your mobile phone, by the way. You ever said some words, whether you have an Apple or Google, and your phone says something back to you just randomly? You didn't say the wake word. You didn't say the word to execute a command on your phone, but your phone responded. Or were you talking about dresses? Were you talking about shoes? Were you talking about buying a new blender and when you went on side Google search you went on side Microsoft Bing all of a sudden you see all these advertisements for blenders and dresses and shoes but you never searched for it until you had the thought and you may have said it publicly you might have said it with a friend you might have said it with a co-worker but all of a sudden those advertisements are on your phone or they come across a smart uh, your smart device within your home on the screen at each and every turn, family, this is not about me thinking that George Orwell 1984 book has come into fruition. No, I don't think it. I know it. And you know it as well. You're like, hold up. I didn't, I didn't say, hey, Google. It, it's kind of like this, right? Hey, Google, what time is it? It's 9.04 a.m. Google said it's 9.04 a.m. We have these devices and we live around these devices and they are recording what you say. They're recording what you do. They're recording your actions because at first we're just thinking, okay, well, they put the cameras in place to stop people and prevent people as a deterrent not to speed. But now they're using cameras, federal, state and local to not only catch crime, not to only to prevent as a deterrent of crime, but to literally understand the environment and what you operate in and what you do in those environments because that tells them how to market to you it tells them how to advertise to you it tells them what political party you mostly affiliated with whether they will strengthen your political affiliation or they will weaken your affiliation simply because these cameras are watching each and every movement that you make and family, if you're just tuning in, you might want to rewind this video from the beginning because there's a lot to unpack here. Let me move on. It states here that China has at least 2 million cameras installed in their country, while the United States and Germany have 50 million and 5.2 million CCT cameras each. You probably didn't know this. And it goes on to say, with more than 1 million cameras, the United Kingdom has 5 million CCT cameras installed, followed by Japan with 5 million, Vietnam 2.6 million, France with 1.65 million, and South Korea with only a million. I thought Korea had a lot more than that. And the Netherlands with 1 million. But it states here, the last sentence, which is the most important, especially if you are a United States citizen or you live within the United States, that they have 15 CCT cameras for every 100 individuals. And believe me, that is a lot of cameras. Because 100 people for two cameras is really nothing. It can, as long as you're within the frame of the lens of the camera, you can be recorded. And now some of these cameras are now being embedded with listening devices. Okay, listening devices, listening sensors that can hear up to certain decimals 
and make out words and speech. And I know all this, some of you are already thinking that do these cameras have facial recognition? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. See, we sign up and we do all these things within a virtual space. And you're wondering, is your privacy being violated? 100%. <laughs> your privacy is being violated, right? You got your picture on Twitter. You got your picture on YouTube. You got your picture on Facebook. They take your profiles. They take this information. They take your picture and they load it inside of a database. And then they match you up with the location, right? Because your phone has GPS. Your phone has a location beacon. So that's why you have the option of turning on and off your location, but they can track you from your very phone. So they know it's you from your Facebook profile, from your YouTube profile, from your Twitter profile. They know exactly where you are, what you're doing at each and every time. And whether you have Instagram or not, they're matching up your facial recognition, all these different points within your face, load inside the database. Then they had the CCTV to follow you each and everywhere you go. And family, as I'm talking here, I'm trying to really find this show uh, that shows the use of video cameras of how people are followed through CCTV cameras. And believe it or not, it's a real show. And I don't mean like a reality show, but it's a real show. But bear with me here. I'm doing this on a whim. Give me one second, family. I, I think it's important because if you watch this show, you, <laughs> you will totally understand what I'm getting at. Because if you didn't read the book, that's the name of the show, Person of Interest. Anyone ever read that uh, show, Person of Interest? Well, let me move this over for you guys to understand exactly where I come from. Here we go. This show right here, I will just watch a couple of episodes and this show will have a great depiction of the very thing I'm talking about. And I'm just going to read what it says right here. It says an ex-CIA agent and a wealthy programmer save lives via a surveillance AI that sends them the identities of civilians involved in impending crimes. However, the details of the crimes, including the civilian roles, are left a mystery. So basically, this is what I was talking about, how certain things can predict what you're going to do, right? Remember that show, Minority Report? of when Tom it, was a, it wasn't a show it's a show now but it was a movie of how Tom Cruise was an agent um, of pre-crime meaning he was stopping crimes and people were actually getting locked up for crimes they have yet committed all of these shows are based upon George Orwell's 1984 book and none of these are far-fetched because as I'm giving you the facts here family you're like man you connecting a lot of dots <laughs> you have to in a sense, put on your tempo of Kufi and understand what I'm getting at, that this is already occurring present day. It's already occurring. This is not far-fetched at all. Let me move on. Researchers at Northeastern University have discovered that smart speakers are often fooled into recording when they hear words other than the weight words created to summon Amazon Alexa, Apple Siri, Google Assistant, and Microsoft Cortana. And what does that pose? It poses a huge privacy risk, does it not? And it goes on to show you how people, by their commands, are being recorded. Because if you use your smart device to turn your TV, if you use your smart device to summon a show or movie or, or a documentary of some sort, they are recording some of your trends they're recording some of your behaviors of the shows you like if i understand what you like can i not market and advertise you can i not infiltrate your thoughts in your mind based upon your own your own perceptions of the world and the environment that you're in D does anyone understand that because here's the thing it's important that you are self-aware enough to understand what the hell is going on and if you notice, I'm not leaning one way or another 
Is it good? Is it bad? Is it positive? Is it negative? But I will give you my personal accord. I give you my personal attestment. This is evil in my opinion. Whether it be CRT, CCTV cameras, smart devices that literally record everything you say, records every activity you have uh, uh, done, every command you have given it. Because you know, again, I have to use this analogy because it has happened to us all, I'm pretty sure, where you and someone else was having a conversation or you simply just mentioned something and then you went on your phone and maybe you was trying to Google a particular thing. And as you are Googling or binging or searching for whatever it is, the very same thing that you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, an hour ago, two hours ago, starts to being advertised on the very page that you're reading, on the very page that you're researching. Advertising and marketing. So don't just think it's big brothers. This is not the government. Oh, it's corporations as well. And also those special interest group. And I really want to lean to those special interest group as those big think tanks for, you know, uh, political parties that really try to uh, sway the tide one way or another and really be, it really infiltrate your very thoughts and your patterns. Let's move on. By using machine learning, to analyze complex patterns of activity in a person's brain. When think of a specific number of objects, read a sentence, experience a particular emotion, or learn a new type of information, the researchers can read minds and know the person's specific thoughts and emotions. How technology is used to control your thoughts by using machine learning to analyze complex patterns of activity in their person's brain. When they think of a specific number or object, read a sentence, experience a particular emotion or learn a new type of information. The researchers can read minds and know the person's specific thoughts and emotions. Is there a technology that can read your thoughts? Brain reading technologies are rapidly being developed in a number of neuroscience fields. These technologies can record, process, and decode neural signals. That has been described as mind reading technology in some instances, especially in popular media. See, someone is saying, well, that that really doesn't equate for someone reading your brain or reading your mind, so to speak. But family, what they do is, as they have these monitors, these little cradles around people's head, and they're monitoring every uh, neural signal and function, and they have all these uh, machines that showing when we introduce certain pictures, sounds, and light, his brain or her brain responds in this particular matter. That's why it's called brain reading technology that could could in some forms turn into brain altering technology. It's kind of like anything else. Before you do a particular thing, most of us have to read about it or we have to watch a video about it, right? So right now they're just getting the data. That machine learning, big data. They have to get the data first. Brain reading technology. And they use it with picture, video, sounds, and lights. Now they're starting to use situations and having people to select a particular option, right? It's similar to like virtual reality. And we're going to get into that as well. Virtual reality where they put some sort of apparatus around your head and they have all of these sensors hooked up to you and they're trying to read your neural signals based upon certain scenarios, certain situations, Whether it be A, B, C, D, you know, pick one. What would you do in the situation? Or in virtual reality, you you have the freedom in this virtual space to do that very thing. How can we create such a place so we can learn people's actions, behavior, their thoughts? And how can we record it, process it, and decode it? You know it. 
the metaverse. Uh oh. 10 4 Koopy time. Metaverse is a social space where they can compete while also socializing with their friends. You don't even got to go outside no more. You don't even have to call nobody no more. You don't have to do video chat no more. You don't have to meet somebody at the coffee shop no more. You can socialize right there on Metaverse. It went from video chat on Facebook and Instagram and all these other social media apps to meeting up with your friends in the Metaverse. Why would we create a virtual space where people can socialize in? And have conversations and interact. Oh man, I'm going to the coffee shop in the metaverse. Because they're learning your behavior. They're recording your actions. They're processing your thoughts and they are decoding them. It says it has been dubbed a global living room for millions of gamers. Game 5, as you know, is a pay to earn gaming destination. combines video game blockchain blah 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 but the point here it's a global living room for millions of people metaverse is a social space where they can compete while also socializing with their friends let's move on in the broadest terms the metaverse is understood as a graphically rich virtual space with some degree of immersitude where people can work play shop socialize in short do the things humans like to do in real life <laughs> family they're going to use this data they're going to use this information to basically see if you are prone to violence if you are prone to crime if you are prone to illegitimate sexual activities if you're prone to rape, if you're prone to assault and battery, or are you prone to um, robbery? Because they're making this metaverse, right? Which is graphically rich, where you can work, play, shop, and socialize. Now, nothing within the metaverse, as long as you're not a hacker, nothing in the metaverse will assumably be illegal, but it will be illegal, right? They're going to start having this world where you can just go and upload yourself. You saw that movie with Ryan Reynolds I believe the, the name of the movie was play where he uploaded himself and in his virtual reality space and there's another show when you die your consciousness is uploaded right and then they made uh they clone people's body where they can download the consciousness back into it all of these things and these tall tale signs of how George Orwell's book Eric Blair's book has been very prominent in the future that we live in today. Now, he, he, he wrote this book back in 1949, right after Nazism with Hitler, after World War II. So, family, we have to understand what the hell is going on, right? That's what we have to understand. And we have to really connect the dots of how, in some form or fashion, we're being controlled. See, that's the thing about me. I know that <laughs> big brothers, special interests, corp corporations are trying to control the way I think about things. They're trying to control the way I look at things. They're trying to give me certain depictions and perceptions in order to control my actions. Because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, if I control your thoughts, I control your body. You ever heard someone say, oh, man, he got the gift of gab. That means he's so convincing and, and, and so intelligent to a certain degree where you believe what he's saying without any proof. That's what the gift of gab is for me. The gift of gab is he seems so intelligent or she seems so intelligent. They seem well, uh, well rounded, well versed, well built, etc. And they're so good at talking that they can just woo you and you believe anything they say without any proof. Let me move on. Virtual reality. Because all of this go hands in hand. Metaverse, virtual reality, uh, VR, all of these things go hand in hand. It says that virtual reality, VR for short, 
generated environment with scenes and objects that a that appear to be real, making the user feel they are immersed in their surroundings. Now, of course, on the side of technology, people are just creating things that they will love to see to come into fruition, whether it be sci-fi or advanced technology. But again, there's always a sinister use of what seems to be fun, good, and great. There's always a dark side. Because by VR and by the way of the metaverse, by generating these environments, that things seem to be real, they're recording your actions and your response, and they are processing that and decoding that in order to understand how you will behave. They're like, well, well, why would they do that? They'll do that to influence you politically. They will do that to influence you socioeconomically. They will uh, use that to influence you in a behavior sort of sense of way. Family, I'm not making this up, as you know. The proof is out there. And here's the thing. When you combine VR, okay, when you combine VR and the metaverse, right? Now, it says here, users can access the metaverse through VR and many other technologies such as AR glasses, blah, 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 right? Because they're combining the two now. You're going to use your VR and then enter the metaverse. So you're going to be totally immersed in this real graphical rich place where you can socialize and go to work and play and eat and all these things and we've had plenty of tv shows we have had plenty of movies to show all of this this is important if you ask meta or its peers whether the metaverse is possible the answer is a confident yes it's just a matter of time the challenges are vast, but ta te technology will overcome them. Family, I can tell you this. Anything that the human mind can conceive, it can achieve. Let me say it again. Anything that the human mind can conceive, it can achieve. Because who would have thought that I could be in a virtual space and, and, and play and work and eat and all these things. Now, back in 1949, when George Orwell wrote this book, he took a deep, dark look into the future. This is my opinion. He took a deep, dark look into the future. Who would have known that TV shows like The Person of Interest would show us how the government could absolutely watch you and understand your behavior through simple closed caption cameras? Who would have thought that? Not me. Who would have thought that the most powerful country on earth has cameras, have 15 cameras per 100 citizens? Who would have thought that the United States has 15.28 closed caption TV cameras every 100 individuals? Also, who would have thought that we have more cam cameras per person than China? We have more closed circuit TV cameras than China. And China is a communistic country. It's a dictatorship. Who would have thought that? Family, <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. And for those who tuned in and tuned out, I hope you go back and watch this because I believe that this broadcast is very important. You can take it with a grain of salt. But this is the reality that we all now live in. You guys have a great and wonderful Tuesday. And maybe I was really thinking, was this too deep? Was this too dark? Was this too in depth? Was this just too much on a Tuesday? It never is. You guys have a great and wonderful day. I'm out. <laughs>